And let's select the keyframe, press T, choose Bounce. Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to create this cute house assembly animation and I really hope you will enjoy this one. And if you do, please don't forget to leave that like. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe. Let's now jump right into empty blender file and let's select the light and the cube, press X and delete. And now let's press shift A and start with the plane and we'll double the size. So tap into the edit mode, press S and two to scale it up and confirm with enter. And now we can press Ctrl shift B to create the bevel and give this rounded corner so increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel to something like this, maybe even 5. And now press A to select all and extrude down. And now let's press A and Shift N to recalculate normals just in case. And now tab out and let's press Shift A and we'll add another plane. And we'll press G then Shift Z to move it on X and Y axis out of the way a little bit like this. And tab into the edit mode and let's scale it up a little bit just like that and press E and extrude so this will be our walls and now press P and separate the selection that will separate the top plane into a new object so we can now tab out select the new object tab into the remote press A and press ctrl F for face menu and choose poke faces that will create the vertex in the middle so you can now select the vertex press G then Z and move it up this will be our quick roof now hold alt and select the bottom loop and press G twice and start sliding these up. Now hold Alt key. They'll enable you to slide them out as well. So slide them down like this a little bit. So we have a nice roof. And now press A and Alt E to extrude faces along normals. And again, just in case, we'll press A and Shift N to recalculate the normals. Now we can tap out and let's return to the walls. So let's select the box object, tap into the edit mode. And let's enable X-ray view and we'll delete the bottom one first. So go to the face select here, select the bottom, press X and delete faces. And now I want to separate these into a new object. So go for edge select, hold Ctrl and Alt and click one of these edges that will select them all around. And press V to rip them apart and just right click to release in place. And now if you select all and press P to separate, there's an option to separate by loose parts. And since we separated those by V. Um, we can now just click this and you will see they will get separated each to their own object. And now let's make sure in the object mode you select all of them, tap into the edit mode and let's select these two and press Alt E and extrude on normals. Let's extrude them out a little bit like this and now press A and Shift N again and now select these two and extrude them inside. So press Alt E and extrude inside all like this and again a and shift N to recalculate normals. And now to match the roof, let's press one for a front view and press S then X and just scale this whole thing down a little bit. If you feel like this is too fast for you or you don't understand some core concepts, make sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustration all the way to full character illustration, textured environments and much more. And I build the courses as creative projects, each with its own style. And every time there's a new technique or something needs explaining, we stop for a while and you get an in-depth explanation. But in the end, you still get a full project result. So if you're interested, please check out the link in the description. So now we have all of these separate walls that we can animate later. And now let's create like a door and a window and a small tree to have some more elements in the scene. So with this front wall selected, tap into the edit mode. Let's go for edge select, select this edge right here, hold shift S and snap cursor to select it. Now tap out and let's press shift A and we'll add a plane. Now tap into the edit mode, press R then Y and 90 to rotate 90 degrees. Let's confirm with enter and now press G then Z and 1 to move this one meter up and they'll place it exactly on the origin point. So now we can press S then Y, scale it a little bit like this to create the door shape and now tap out and scale it like this according to the origin point. Now tap back in, press E to extrude, I to inset and E to extrude inside all like this. And again, A and Shift enter to calculate normals. And now we'll create the window here. So tab out and we can disable the X-ray view at this point. Select this wall right here, tab into the edit mode. Let's make sure we select this front face, hold Shift S and snap cursor to select it so it's in the middle. Tab out and let's press Shift A and we'll add another plane. And again, tap into the remote, press R, then X, and 90 degrees. 
and confirm and press S to scale it down like this and let's just press E to extrude I to inset and again E to extrude a little bit like this so we'll just snap these elements on the walls all like that and now to make things a little bit more interesting let's select the bottom face here press shift D right click to release in place and press E to extrude and select the front face press G then Y and move it out just like this so we get a little bit more interest and now we can tab out and now let's add some build modifiers here so select the bottom go to modifiers panel and let's add generate and bevel modifier let's increase the segments to two maybe even three so it's more smooth and let's reduce the segments and in the shading let's check hardened normals and right now we'll just hold shift select everything else and let's click this arrow here and copy to select it they'll move the bevel modifier to all of the objects and right click and shade smooth now there might be some issues with the bevel modifier in inside corners like this but it's easily fixed and with everything still selected we can just expand the geometry here on the bevel modifier and switch the miter to arc and just hold alt key when you're doing it and confirm and they'll adjust this setting on each of the bevel modifier of all of the selected objects so now there is just a little bit of an overlap so we can just select these and make them more subtle all like this and to make this transition inside a little bit more sharp we can separate some of the geometry so tab in select this face right here and just press p and separate the selection and now if you tab out you will see it's no longer part of the door and we can just tab in press a to select all and g then x to move it in the edit mode like this now you will see we have that sharper transition there and let's do the same for the windows so tab in select the face and press p and separate the selection now tab out, select that new object, tab into the edit mode, press A and G, then Y to move towards the front a little bit, so there's no gap. Now to be able to move some of these objects as one, let's select the inside piece, hold shift, select the frame, press Ctrl P and parent to object. Now let's do the same for the door, so hold shift, select the frame, press Ctrl P and parent. And now hold shift and right click here to move the cursor and let's press shift A and we'll add a UV sphere let's just right click shade it smooth and scale it down so there's like a doorknob there we can move it on x axis a little bit and hold shift and again select the frame and Control p and parent so it moves as one object and now finally shift right click here to move the cursor let's press shift a and we'll create a circle and we can modify this to something like 12 vertices tab into the edit mode and let's press s to scale it down a little bit now press 1 for vertex select and press E then Z to extrude those vertices up. And now press Shift D and S to scale this. Maybe even more, a little bit. Now press F to fill, E to extrude and S to scale it down. So there'll be like a little tree here. And let's press Ctrl R and create few supporting loops here. And now if we tab out and press Ctrl 2, we add subdivision surface modifier, right click and shade smooth. And if the shading is too stretched, you can press Ctrl R here and add more loops there so it's, you know, more smooth. And now we can just animate all of this. So let's expand the timeline a little bit. And I want to do like an 80 frame animation all in all. And now in the output settings, let's change the frame rate to 30. And now around frame 40, the assembly of the house will happen. But before we do, let's hold Shift S and snap cursor to roll the regime. Now let's press shift a and we'll add an empty now let's do like an arrows so it's more visible and here in the data settings let's just expand this so it's easy to select it and now we'll just select all the top level objects and parent it to this empty so easiest way to do that is to just select all of this in the outliner so click the first object hold shift select the bottom and now hold shift and here in the viewport select the empty so it's yellow and now press ctrl p and parent to object so now if we move the empty or rotate it the whole scene um, will adjust so now we can press n for the side panel and let's start with the base so let's do a scale animation there and make sure you're on the frame 40 and just right click here and insert keyframes they'll insert keyframes for x and y and z scale and now we move to frame one and let's just click and drag across all of these and hit zero and enter 
and right click and insert keyframes. So now we are scaling this over 40 frames. So let's move back to the frame 4D and let's set up the roof. So select the roof and we'll right click the Z location and insert single keyframe. And now if we move to frame one, we can press G and Z, move this up a little bit like this and right click and insert single keyframe. The reason I'm doing the keyframes in the reverse order clearly is that I want to have a full assembled house here at frame 4D. So that's why I'm always starting there and then moving these away for frame one. So let's go back to frame 4D and let's do these adjustments for other objects. So select door frame and we'll be moving this across X axis. So let's right click the X location and insert single keyframe and now move to frame one. Press G then X and move it away quite a lot and right click and insert single keyframe. And now let's go back to 4D. We'll do the same for the window, even though it will be on the Y axis. So insert single keyframe and let's crop to frame one. And let's press G then Y and move it away. And again, right click and insert single keyframe. And now let's select the walls one by one. Let's move to frame 40. And again, we'll use single keyframe for each of these. And now let's move to frame one. And let's just select all of them. Press G and Z, move them up like this. And now we'll select them one by one and right click and insert single keyframe. Okay, and now let's select the tree, go to frame 40. Right click and insert single keyframe on the Z axis and let's move to frame one. Press G then Z, move it up. Right click and insert single keyframe. So this is the basic animation block out. You know, if you play this, uh, this doesn't look interesting in any way. It all happens on the same frames. It all has, you know, a pretty linear speed, even though it's a little bit eased out. Um, but now we're gonna expand this timeline here and let's control tab and move ourselves into the graph editor and now we'll make it a little bit more interesting. So first of all, let's start with the base here. And we have all of the scales X and Y and Z on one graph. So we can drag a selection around the first keyframe, press T and we can choose different interpolation and we can choose something like bounce. And they'll create this effect where it kind of bounces into place. And, and of course we can make it shorter. So let's drag a selection around this keyframe, press G then X and move it closer like frame 20. So it's a little bit faster and snappy. And now we're going to lay down the walls. So let's select those. I will just drag a selection here. And we can see them all in one place. So we can just drag selection around the keyframe and move it for all of those. So let's make it shorter. Press G then X and move it closer a little bit. And now let's make the animation more snappy for each of those. So let's select them one by one. And let's just select this handle and make the curve like this. So the speed is quite fast uh, in the beginning of the animation and then it eases out. So it goes like this. Let's do the same for each of those walls. Like that. And now we can shift them around a little bit. So we can, for example, select these and shift them a few frames around. Here even further. Here maybe a tiny bit. So they're all falling at a different time like this. So now if you play it back, looks like that. Now let's select the door frame. And again, we'll make this quite snappy. So let's move the handle here. So we have similar movement and let's do the same for the window. Okay, and maybe we can make it shorter, like 20 frames. For these and maybe move them a little bit further away, like here. Okay, and now the roof will kind of bounce into place around here. So let's select this frame and move it here. Let's make this more steep. 
And let's select the keyframe, press T, choose bounce. So it will kind of fall into place like that. Okay, and we'll do the same for the tree here. But let's move it further away, even still. And this frame can go a little bit back. And again, let's make it a little bit more steep. Press T and choose bounce. So we get something like this. And now you can see if you look from the camera, let's select the camera, press G then Z and move it away a little bit. And we can go to the view settings and select the camera to view. So now we can use our viewport controls to position it. Something like here. Well, let's uncheck this. So now if you play back the animation, you get something like this. And now let's add even a little bit more of that funkiness to the animation. And let's do a rotation with this empty here. So at frame one, um, let's go back to the item menu and right click the Z rotation and insert single keyframe. And on frame 4D, we want to be fully rotated. So let's put here like 360 degree, right click and insert single keyframe. And we can press A in the timeline and period on an ampet to zoom on our animation. If you don't have an ampet, you can hold control and use middle mouse button to kind of scale the timeline like this. And now we can move this handle. And let's go a little bit over the desired angle like this. So it will kind of rotate and then rotate back as you can see here. And now let's move to frame 25 here and we can right click and insert single keyframe to kind of interrupt it there. And now select this frame, press T and choose bounce. So we get something like this. We get this steep, fast animation and then the return will be a little bit bouncy. And now it's all about just playing around with these curves and with these time shifts here and there to kind of tune your animation in for what the result you want to see here. So for example, you can choose to maybe um, move in the tree a little bit later as like a final point of the animation, or maybe you can do it a little bit sooner. So I will leave that up to you, you know, play back this animation a few times and just move these elements around, um, play with those curves and the speed of that animation to kind of get the result you want. But this is basically the gist of the whole animation, the little, you know, assembly icon animation. And then you can just, you know, add some background here and add some materials, some lighting. Um, I won't go over that here uh, because the main scope of this tutorial was the animation and the assembly and how to kind of build this small house as fast as, as possible so it can be animated and how to separate um, these elements into a separate objects. Uh, but if you want to see how to best, you know, set up the lighting or anything, you can check out some other of my tutorials. The playlist is in the description or as I mentioned before, um, if you want the fastest and most effective way to learn Blender, you can go on and check out my courses. So that's it for today's animation and I really hope you enjoyed this one. And again, if you did, please don't forget to leave the like and if you're new around here, hit that subscribe. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.